Hello everybody, in this video we'll be looking at condensation polymers. Condensation polymers consist of monomers that are joined together by condensation reactions, as opposed to the generation of radicals that we saw in addition polymerization. The monomers used in condensation polymerization usually contain one or more than one of the following functional groups, carboxylic acid, alcohol, and amine. Again, compare this to the monomers of addition polymers that we saw before, whereby they contain a carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bond. I've got a picture of the brick wall here just to remind you that one of the easy ways to understand the relationship between monomers and polymers is that polymers is the gigantic wall that is made up of smaller bricks that are the monomers. Condensation polymerization involves the condensation reaction that we saw before, which produces small molecules as byproducts. So for example, esterification produces polyesters, which we'll look at in a moment, and this produces a small molecule of water, shown here. Amidation produces polyamides, and through the same mechanism, it also produces a small molecule of water, and hence why these two reactions are both classified as condensation reactions. I want to quickly remind you of esterification. This is where a carboxylic acid reacts with the alcohol to produce an ester and a water molecule. Now, what happens if the carboxylic acid molecule has two different carboxylic acid functional groups? This will result in the formation of two ester bonds, as shown here, as the alcohol molecule can react with both ends of the carboxylic acid. The formation of two ester functional groups also results in the formation of two water molecules. Now, let's look at what happens when we have polyesterification. This is the reaction between a dicarboxylic acid and a dialcohol. We saw earlier that the presence of two carboxylic acid results in the formation of two ester functional groups. Now, by having an alcohol that has two alcohol functional groups, you can imagine that the alcohol can further react with the carboxylic acid to lengthen the molecule. This results in a polymer called a polyester. The production of multiple ester functional groups also results in the formation of many water molecules, as this is a condensation reaction. The production of polyesters uses monomers that are dicarboxylic acids and dialcohols. Specifically, this refers to a molecule that has two carboxylic acid functional groups and a molecule that has two alcohol functional groups. As you can see, the reaction between a carboxylic acid and the alcohol functional group results in the formation of an ester linkage, which is the reason why this is called a polyester. Polyesters can also be formed from monomers that contain carboxylic acid and an alcohol functional group in the same molecule. This molecule, hydroxyethanoic acid, is an example of that. The presence of an alcohol and carboxylic acid functional group on both ends of the molecule allow for the formation of a polymer where the polymer chain can be extended on both ends by forming an ester bond or ester functional group. And again, just to reiterate, every time an ester functional group like this one is formed, a water molecule is also produced as a byproduct. To summarize, polyesters can be produced by using two different kinds of monomers. The reaction between a dicarboxylic acid and a dialcohol produces a polyester where each unit of the polyester contains the two carboxylic acids and the two alcohol functional groups, as shown here. In contrast, a polyester can also be produced by using a single monomer, where that single monomer contains both necessary functional groups, that is the carboxylic acid and the alcohol, to make the ester bond. There are numerous properties of polyesters. Here, I've only included the useful ones that we'll be demonstrating in the applications later. Polyesters have high tensile strength, that is, their structure will remain unchanged under high tension forces. Polyesters can also be drawn into fibers. This is a very useful property to make into clothing and textiles. They are abrasion resistant, heat resistant, and they are also thermoplastics, which are plastics that can be melted to reshape into different applications. Furthermore, they are also chemically inert and non biodegradable. Some common uses of polyesters include textiles in clothing and carpet. This is mainly because polyesters can be drawn into fibers and they are relatively high in terms of tensile strength, 
as well as abrasion resistant. Furthermore, polyesters can also be found in containers, bottles, especially the fruit containers that you typically find in supermarkets. Due to their heat resistant property, polyesters are found in toasters and shower heads, applications that are often exposed to a high temperature. Polyamides are the second group of condensation polymers that you need to know. These polymers are joined together by amide functional groups. This molecule here is an example of amide, and just to remind you, an amide is when there's a nitrogen atom adjacent to a carbonyl group, that is a carbon double bonded to an oxygen atom. This polymer structure here is an example of nylon 66, which is a polyamide. Here, focus on identifying the amide functional group, a nitrogen atom next to a carbonyl functional group. Polyamides, like polyesters, can be formed from different monomers. It can be formed from reacting a diamine and a dicarboxylic acid, whereby the amine functional group can be combined with a carboxylic acid to produce an amide linkage. Alternatively, we can also use a monomer that contains both the carboxylic acid and the amine functional group. Again, the goal here is to react the two different functional groups to produce the amide linkage. And by forming multiple amide linkages, a polymer that is a polyamide can therefore be formed. Here's an example of a reaction between a diamine and a dicarboxylic acid. The amine functional group reacts with the carboxylic acid to form the amide functional group as shown in the polymer here. And this bond repeats, allowing for the extension of this polymer to form a polyamide. Every time this amide functional group is formed, a water molecule is released as a byproduct as amidation is also a condensation reaction. Polyamides can also be formed by using a monomer that contains both the amine and carboxylic acid functional group. Likewise, this results in the formation of an amide functional group, which eventually produces a polyamide as the molecule becomes longer. The key difference between the structure of polyamides and polyesters is that Hydrogen bonds can be formed between polymer chains of polyamides. This is because we have hydrogen atoms bound to a nitrogen, which can be donated to the adjacent oxygen atoms of the second polyamide molecule, as I'm demonstrating right now. On top of hydrogen bonding, polyamides also have extensive dispersion forces as well as dipole forces, which are also found in polyesters. A common example of a polyamide is nylon 6, which is a polyamide made from 6 amino hexanoic acid. This monomer contains an amine functional group on one end and a carboxylic acid functional group on the other end. The reaction between these two functional groups between monomers results in the formation of an amide functional group shown here, and each monomer or each unit of this polyamide polymer contains 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 6 carbon atoms. Therefore, the name of this polymer is nylon 6. Another common example of polyamide is nylon 66. This results from the reaction between two monomers. The structure of nylon 66 is shown here. And as you can recognize, this polymer is formed from a dicarboxylic acid and a diamine. The reaction between the two results in the amide functional group. The reason why it's called nylon 66 is because each monomer contains six carbon atoms. The properties of polyamides or nylon are quite similar to those of polyesters. They have high tensile strength and can also be drawn into fibers. They are also abrasion resistant, elastic, and they are also thermoplastics, that is, they can be melted to be reshaped. A very useful property of polyamides or nylons is that they can absorb moisture. As a result of these useful properties, nylons are usually found in ropes, fishing nets, carpets, and select variations of clothing such as stockings and sportswear. As you can imagine, the ability to absorb moisture, for example sweat, is a very useful property of nylon in terms of sport clothing. 